using my Skywatcher SynScan uh, EQ5 mount and uh, also the Wi-Fi adapter uh, and also the, the app that goes along with the adapter. Uh, on my iPhone, I've simulated various go-to operations and collected screenshots from the app. I made these during the day, and uh, the locations were determined of the objects uh, from Stellarium and also from the app. And scope were found by compass and in, uh, digital inclinometer. Uh, so obviously, not much accuracy was possible. But I think you can you can see from these uh, screenshots uh, more or less how the Wi-Fi device and its app uh, functions. I want to show you in these uh, few images, um, first of all, uh, where to get the adapter, the Wi-Fi adapter, and uh, also uh, where to get the SynScan app, and also where to get the user's manual for the, for the app. Here is the uh, table of contents of the uh, SynScan app manual. Uh, only the first uh, 15 pages are listed here. There's a total of uh, 35 pages altogether. But this gives you a, a, an idea of the uh, details involved in the, uh, in the manual. So to get started, uh, you have to, of course, uh, plug in the, the dongle, this uh, device, into your... Uh, mount and turn the mount on. At that point, the Wi-Fi will start to be transmitted. You then need to go to your uh, phone uh, settings, look for that new uh, transmitted uh, Wi-Fi, and then uh, connect to it in the settings. Uh, you then of course, then you're all you're all connected now, and then you can uh, uh, go to your app, which is also on your phone, previously downloaded from the uh, from the app store. Uh, then, opening, clicking on that app, then will give you the first page of the SynScan app. So here we see the uh, first page of the SynScan app. Starting at the top, we see it's um, connected to equatorial mode, which is automatic. If you have an uh, Alt-As, then it will change to that. Uh, there's an information button. There's an alignment folder which can be clicked on. There's a star folder, which we'll see in a moment, which contains uh, various uh, different objects to look at. There's the deep sky folder for the deep sky objects. There's a utility folder, which contains a lot of stuff. There's some object folder that you can put in your own uh, notes uh, for the locations of objects. And there are the settings, which will involve your time and uh, location, latitude, longitude, all of those things. Then at this lower uh, region here, which can be, which can be uh, taken away uh, by clicking on the down position here, uh, we see uh, 76, eight different arrows left, right, up, down. So these will uh, then be able to control your mount. Uh, we also see a number five here, but written very small. Uh, this indicates the speed at which your mount will be moving when you uh, click these arrows. And you can change from 1 to 10, I believe, with these uh, little arrows left and right, so that um, 
number five gives you a speed of 64 times that of the stars, which is about right for most uh, purposes. So uh, we'll then open this uh, the star folder here and, and see what's inside. So clicking on the utility uh, file or folder, we open up then this utility page. And we see uh, a number of things here. Particularly important, I would say, are the tonight's best, upper right. Uh, and then the help file. So I'll go ahead now and uh, open up the tonight's best and we'll see then a uh, collection of uh, deep sky planet and double scar uh, catalog. And if we click on deep sky, we get a catalog of all of the deep sky uh, material, which has an altitude above zero. So it's all observable tonight. And of course, this is uh, Tonight is, is now because we've uh, uh, established our uh, position and our time of day. And so um, <clears throat> this is taken into account. If we click on planet, we'll see a, a list of planets that are all above the horizon and therefore uh, good for observation, <laughs> except when it's not when their skies are not clear, which is usually the case around my place. Uh, if we click on the double star, we'll see then uh, the whole catalog of double stars that are uh, above the horizon tonight. So this is a, this is a very important um, uh, folder, this... Um, uh, in the utilities, it's called Tonight's Best. It's a little bit strange to be under utilities there, but uh, anyway, uh, so that's that's what that is. Now, if we click, go back to the utility folder and click on Help, uh, then we'll come to a essentially a manual which is the same as the SynScan manual that you download from the internet. So a manual which uh, lists uh, everything involved uh, with this SynScan app. So this is quite important. Now if we go back to the uh, first page again uh, and click on the star folder on the on the top in the middle uh, we'll open up this folder which shows the solar system the names stars the double stars and the comets so if we click on any one of these we will get a catalog of names uh, referring to those uh, various objects uh, now, if I click now on planet, oh no, it was the solar system, uh, I'll get now this list of planets, the moon and the sun. And some of them are covered up by these arrows here, which are the slewing arrows, the ones that move the uh, scope to the desired position. Uh, <clears throat> and this scope now speed is uh, number five, which is something it moves fast enough that you can see it. Of course, number one, if it's just moving at the sidereal star speed, it uh, you you can't see it at all, you can't feel it. You get you have to wait an hour until something happens. And um, <clears throat> so we have this whole list of planets here, uh, all of which are above the horizon. I guess the ones below the horizon with a minus altitude are, uh, don't appear here. So let's just click on Jupiter now. And uh, 
We'll get the Jupiter page. We'll see its magnitude. We'll say its uh, RA and declination. And if we click on the lower lower left arrows, our uh, slewing uh, arrow uh, portion will disappear so we can see the rest of it with the uh, as out uh, as well. So now we've got Jupiter magnitude 2.1. And it's a go-to page, so we can click on go-to and expect our wonderful mount to move. Yes, we expect our mount to move, and uh, hopefully in the direction of Jupiter. Uh, this will, of course, depend upon how well we have uh, oriented the home position with the, uh, the weight forward facing north and the... Uh, angle of the uh, mount fixed on our latitude and in that case we should uh, normally get approximately close to Jupiter and uh, so the mount moves and, uh, and when it stops when it's happy with its position it will give a final a manual center page which uh, instructs us to manually center the object of Jupiter in the middle of the image and this is done this this centering is done with these gray um, the gray arrow keys so these are the slewing keys whose speed can be adjusted by the little arrows left and right. So now it's on speed five. And uh, this is probably sufficient to, to get the mount uh, in a position such that the scope in the center of the eyepiece image is, um, is, is centered on, on Jupiter. Uh, there's something about this moving of the mount. Um, it's very important that we don't actually manually push the mount around by loosening the clutches. This, this can never be done if we're already uh, more or less um, lined up on a, a polar alignment because this will completely ruin it. We'd have to do everything over again. So we're doing this slewing by by clicking back and forth on these arrows until we're centered. Um, so that's that's an important aspect. Never touch the mount. Just touch the uh, the controller, either the hand controller or in this case the uh, app controller, and it's uh, it's gray arrows here. Uh, now, so we, we've we've centered this. This this centering is is a kind of a, an alignment of the go to aspect of the mount. It doesn't align it for tracking purposes. That is done by the polar alignment, which we don't see here at all. Uh, but it's uh, it helps us then to find Jupiter again if we if we center it. Uh, manually as instructed. Uh, very often these um, keys pointing, the key pointing up and the key pointing to the right uh, will uh, blink. And this reminds us that we should uh, take any slack out of the bearings, the mechanical slack, by finishing by clicking these two arrows, the one going up and the one to the right. So we should finish off then with the centering by clicking those two arrows until they stop blinking. Next I go to Mars. Um, I go back to the um, <clears throat> page uh, 
listing the planets and uh, find Mars. And if it's above the horizon, as it is shown here, it's to be uh, five degrees above the horizon in the northeast. Uh, if I click on Mars, I'll come to the go-to page for Mars. Uh, and if I click on go-to, the mount will start to move, hopefully in the direction of the northeast at a low, uh, low on the horizon. Uh, and it, it did that. I don't show it here. The mount did move uh, approximately correctly. And then came the um, manually center Mars uh, request. And, um, and then I should use these slewing uh, arrows to center Mars in the image. Going back to the uh, first page and clicking on star gets us to this page that we've seen before where we have the solar system, the name star, the double star, and the comets. Now clicking on name star gives us um, this uh, selection of a catalog of all the stars that are above the horizon. I believe, and uh, we can go down and, and click on the second star, for example, Cygnus. We see that it's in the southwest at 247 uh, azimuth and uh, 65 degrees altitude, so quite high in the sky. And um, then if we click on this, we get our go-to page for Cygnus, and we see its uh, brightness, and uh, we also see, uh, since we've removed here the, um, we've removed here the um, slewing arrows by clicking on that lower left arrow, um, and now we can see the azimuth and altitude. Now it's 22.173, so it's higher in the sky than before. And um, so this is the go-to page. Now we click on go-to, and uh, the, the mount should be moving to that position um, in the northwest. And, um, and when it's finally reached its the mount, it finally reaches destination, uh, it will give us the opportunity to manually center Cygnus in the eyepiece. And we do this by clicking on these uh, slewing arrows, the gray arrows. And uh, when we finish this, probably the top uh, arrow going up and the arrow to the right will start blinking. And this means that we should click once again on them uh, to finish this um, centering. The mount, uh, as many of you know, needs to be aligned uh, to the uh, polar star, basically, or to the true polar north. Uh, which ensures um, the fact that then the RA, the right ascension axis, will uh, move correctly around the uh, true northern point. Uh, in addition uh, to this polar alignment, uh, there is an alignment that should be done to align basically the go-to function of the mount. So this is then independent of the polar alignment. And for the, uh, as can be read here in this uh, 
in the manual here are a couple of pages here uh, the uh, the uh, equatorial mount that we're dealing with here should be uh, uh, aligned with two stars or three stars. So here we're going through the two star alignment procedure. Uh, what we need to do then is to go back to the uh, very first page and click on alignment here upper upper left in the uh on the first page and uh this will bring us to an alignment procedure and here we see the two star alignment so if we click on that this will permit us to choose two stars i don't quite remember i think the stars are suggested and then one clicks on them and um, and so here is uh, Alderbaran and Merak, the two stars, have been chosen uh, for this two-star alignment. Uh, and then the mount asks you to, first of all, uh, zoom in on um, or align with the first star. And so that has been... Uh, accomplished, and here we now see the centering of that first star uh, being uh, being offered here. That we should center this, as we've centered other things, uh, using these uh, slewing arrows. Uh, and then the mount the mount automatically proceeds to the second star, Merak, and. Uh, and then the mount moves to Merak, and then we're uh, asked to also center the second star. So this this then completes the two star alignment, and uh, will will help uh, help the mount find these uh, stars uh, and other stars also. Uh, as we wish. Probably this uh, alignment procedure should have been uh, described earlier, but uh, it doesn't matter so much because each star, as we looked at it, the planets and all, we centered those, and that's also a kind of alignment. I have found uh, some other uh, YouTube presentations on the subject of the SynScan Wi-Fi adapter, uh, which I think are worth watching. Uh, since I'm a beginner and not an expert, I, uh, I can always get more information from other people, and I think you probably can too. Uh, so here are four... Uh, YouTubes that I think uh, you would profit from, as I did. Well, um, this this uh, presentation is dragged on a bit with the narration, uh, but I hope you think it was worth the 23 minutes of your time. Uh, in any way, of course, you could fast forward in order to catch the goodies. Uh, so here are these uh, four suggestions for other YouTubes. And um, I hope this has been useful for some of you. And uh, thank you for watching. Hope to see you some other time. Bye-bye.